Hello comic fans, and welcome to another episode of CRT, the channel where we tell you the stories behind your favorite comics. Today we're going to talk about one of the most epic and controversial events in Marvel history, Civil War. Civil War was a crossover event that ran from 2006 to 2007, and involved almost every major character in the Marvel Universe. It was written by Mark Miller, the creator of Kick-Ass and Kingsman, and drawn by Steve McNiven, the artist of Old Man Logan and Death of Wolverine. The story was inspired by the real-world issues of post-9-11 security, civil liberties, and personal responsibility. The premise of Civil War is simple. After a tragic incident involving a group of young superheroes, the U.S. government passes a Superhuman Registration Act, which requires all superpowered individuals to reveal their identities and work for the authorities. This causes a rift among the superhero community, as some heroes agree to comply with the law, while others refuse to give up their secret identities and freedom. The two sides are led by two of the most iconic and respected heroes in the Marvel Universe, Iron Man and Captain America. What follows is a brutal and emotional conflict that pits hero against hero, friend against friend, and family against family. Along the way, we see the impact of the war on the lives of ordinary people, the media, the villains, and even the cosmic entities. We also witness some shocking twists and turns, some heartbreaking deaths and sacrifices, and some epic battles and team-ups. Civil War is widely regarded as one of the best and most influential stories in Marvel history, as it changed the status quo of the Marvel Universe for years to come. It also inspired the 2016 blockbuster movie Captain America. Civil War, which adapted some of the key elements of the comic, but also made some significant changes. So, without further ado, let's dive into Civil War. The story begins with a group of young superheroes called the New Warriors, who are filming a reality TV show in Stamford, Connecticut. They encounter a group of supervillains hiding in a house and decide to attack them, hoping to boost their ratings. The fighting begins, and among the villains is Nitro a man who can explode and reform himself at will. The new warriors are outmatched and outnumbered, and in a desperate move, one of them, Speedball, tries to contain Nitro's blast. However, he fails, and Nitro detonates himself, killing most of the new warriors and the villains, as well as hundreds of civilians, including 60 children at a nearby school. The explosion is caught on camera and broadcasted to the nation. After some time other superheroes arrive there, and survivors were being rescued. But among the superheroes was Wolverine, who was being watched by the Sentinels due to which he wasn't looking very happy. In a church, Stamford Memorial Service was taking place which was attended by none other than Tony Stark. Tony was confronted by a woman who was accusing Tony to be the one responsible for the death of her son. A series of attacks were made on the several superheroes in New York, and the latest victim of those attacks was the Human Torch. Meanwhile, at the Baxter Building, there was a gathering of superheroes to discuss how the superheroes should respond to the President's solution. There were 23 superheroes present including Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Daredevil, etc. At the same time at the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, Captain America is confronted by Maria Hill, where Captain tells her how that plan will make them have war with one another. After few words were exchanged, a fight starts between Captain and the S.H.I.E.L.D. commandos, but Captain is able to escape the place in an air jet. At the Baxter Building, Watcher appears. In Washington, D.C., protest was taking place outside the President House, and inside the House, Reed Richards, Ant-Man, and Iron Man were present, who tells the President to go with the Registration Act and leave Captain America to them. This marks the end of the issue, and also the base for the Civil War is laid by the end, where there was clearly two sides, one that supports the Superhero Registration Act, and other who does not. The second issue starts with Vulture and Grim Reaper captured by some S.H.I.E.L.D. commandos and Maria Hill scheming something. At the New York City, some heroes took down Doombot and others were helping people. Later in night, at the Baxter Building, Reed Richards was busy on some classified project whose information he refuses to share with Susan. At the Daily Bugle, Jonah got the interesting news that Tony Stark is holding a huge press conference. 24 hours later, S.H.I.E.L.D. took down Patriot and arrested some other heroes, but soon, 
they are rescued to a safer place by Daredevil and team. At Washington, D.C., press conference already started, and to everyone's surprise, Spider-Man makes an appearance at the stage where he removes his mask and reveals his identity. Continuing to the third issue, Peter is questioned by several reporters meanwhile at Wakanda. Reed Richards meets up with Black Panther while in Westchester. Tony was meeting with Jean where they exchanged some words, and while leaving Tony was interrupted by someone. At a cafe Captain America, Hercules, Daredevil, and Goliath were meeting in secret where they get the news that a petrochemical plant has been on fire. Hearing this, they immediately gears up and rushes to the place. Upon reaching there, they realize that they have been set up by the other bunch of superheroes. Tony and Captain comes face to face where Tony tries to talk to Captain and tells him to surrender, but instead of surrendering Captain, and Goliath launches attack on Tony. Soon, other heroes also starts fighting where Spider-Man took on Captain America, later Iron Man replaces Spider-Man, and both him and Captain starts exchanging fists. While this was going on, a huge thunder strikes on Hercules from the sky, and God of Thunder Thor arrives at the scene. The issue ends there, and makes the readers aware of all the fighting that's going to happen in the upcoming issues. The next issue begins with Thor brutally attacking Captain's team, and Iron Man bringing Captain to his knees. Captain is then saved by Hercules, and Captain's team tries to fight back. Falcon rescues an injured Captain, and Goliath tries to tackle Thor. Thor charges his thunder and trajects it towards Goliath, piercing through his chest. Everyone realizes that Thor has mercilessly killed the Goliath. Thor then tries to attack others, but Susan arrives and saves them from Thor's attack, allowing them to escape the scene. Later, it is revealed that it was not Thor who was fighting, but a clone made by Reed Richards who shuts it down. Susan was angry with Reed, others were shocked by Goliath's death, and the Watcher was sad. At the Avengers Tower, Reed was fixing clone Thor, Spider-Man and Hank Pym were discussing some things, and Spider-Man questions whether they have picked the right team or not. At the Secret Avengers headquarters, Captain America was being treated while others were present with him. The Goliath's funeral took place in New Jersey and was attended by many people. Susan decides to leave the Baxter building and left a note by Reed's side. At the Avengers Tower, Tony and Reed were talking about how they need people with fighting experience. The issues progresses towards the end, and it is revealed that the new team they have gathered is the latest iteration of the Thunderbolts, which includes people like Bullseye, Venom, and Taskmaster. This issue starts building the rift between Spider-Man and Iron Man, which later on gets escalated and also sets up a dangerous new team, 